Eric Hoffer quotes. Disappointment is a sort of bankruptcy, the bankruptcy of a soul that expends too much in hope and expectation. Rudeness is the weak man's imitation of strength. We lie the loudest when we lie to ourselves. In times of change, learners inherit the earth, while the learned find themselves beautifully equipped to deal with a world that no longer exists. Every great cause begins as a movement, becomes a business, and eventually degenerates into a racket. People who bite the hand that feeds them usually lick the boot that kicks them. The hardest arithmetic to master is that which enables us to count our blessings. When people are free to do as they please, they usually imitate each other. When people are bored, it is primarily with their own selves that they are bored. We are told that talent creates its own opportunities. But it sometimes seems that intense desire creates not only its own opportunities but its own talents. Hatred is the most accessible and comprehensive of all the unifying agents. Mass movements can rise and spread without belief in a god, but never without a belief in a devil. Anger is the prelude to courage. Our frustration is greater when we have much and want more than when we have nothing and want some. We are less dissatisfied when we lack many things than when we seem to lack but one thing. Absolute faith corrupts as absolutely as absolute power. You can discover what your enemy fears most by observing the means he uses to frighten you. A man is likely to mind his own business when it is worth minding. When it is not, he takes his mind off his own meaningless affairs by minding other people's business. It still holds true that man is most uniquely human when he turns obstacles into opportunities. Far more crucial than what we know or do not know is what we do not want to know. The greatest weariness comes from work not done. It is the individual only who is timeless. Societies, cultures, and civilizations past and present are often incomprehensible to outsiders, but the individual's hungers, anxieties, dreams, and preoccupations have remained unchanged through the millennia. Nonconformists travel as a rule in bunches. You rarely find a nonconformist who goes it alone. And woe to him inside a nonconformist clique who does not conform with nonconformity. In a world of change, the learners shall inherit the earth, while the learned shall find themselves perfectly suited for a world that no longer exists. You can never get enough of what you don't need to make you happy. The opposite of the religious fanatic is not the fanatical atheist but the gentle cynic who cares not whether there is a god or not. The remarkable thing is that we really love our neighbor as ourselves, we do unto others as we do unto ourselves. We hate others when we hate ourselves. We are tolerant toward others when we tolerate ourselves. We forgive others when we forgive ourselves. We are prone to sacrifice others when we are ready to sacrifice ourselves. Our greatest pretenses are built up not to hide the evil and the ugly in us, but our emptiness. The hardest thing to hide is something that is not there. To a man utterly without a sense of belonging, mere life is all that matters. It is the only reality in an eternity of nothingness, and he clings to it with shameless despair. The quality of ideas seems to play a minor role in mass movement leadership. What counts is the arrogant gesture, the complete disregard of the opinion of others, the single-handed defiance of the world. An empty head is not really empty, it is stuffed with rubbish. Hence the difficulty of forcing anything into an empty head. To be fully alive is to feel that everything is possible. It is startling to realize how much unbelief is necessary to make belief possible. Passionate hatred can give meaning and purpose to an empty life. People with a sense of fulfillment think it is a good world and would like to conserve it as it is, 
while the frustrated favor radical change. The feeling of being hurried is not usually the result of living a full life and having no time. It is on the contrary born of a vague fear that we are wasting our life. When we do not do the one thing we ought to do, we have no time for anything else we are the busiest people in the world. We feel free when we escape, even if it be from the frying pan into the fire. Man staggers through life yapped at by his reason, pulled and shoved by his appetites, whispered to by fears, beckoned by hopes. Small wonder that what he craves most is self-forgetting. What monstrosities would walk the streets were some people's faces as unfinished as their minds. Many of the insights of the saint stem from his experience as a sinner. There are many who find a good alibi far more attractive than an achievement. For an achievement does not settle anything permanently. We still have to prove our worth anew each day, we have to prove that we are as good today as we were yesterday. But when we have a valid alibi for not achieving anything we are fixed, so to speak, for life. There would be no society if living together depended upon understanding each other. A movement is pioneered by men of words, materialized by fanatics and consolidated by men of action. The permanent misfits can find salvation only in a complete separation from the self, and they usually find it by losing themselves in the compact collectivity of a mass movement. You can never get enough of what you don't really need. The individual's most vital need is to prove his worth, and this usually means an insatiable hunger for action. For it is only the few who can acquire a sense of worth by developing and employing their capacities and talents. The majority prove their worth by keeping busy. The beginning of thought is in disagreement, not only with others but also with ourselves. Propaganda serves more to justify ourselves than to convince others, and the more reason we have to feel guilty, the more fervent our propaganda. There is no doubt that in exchanging a self-centered for a selfless life we gain enormously in self-esteem. The vanity of the selfless, even those who practice utmost humility, is boundless. In a time of drastic change it is the learners who inherit the future. The learned usually find themselves equipped to live in a world that no longer exists.